Uh, good morning, Judge Sardiwala. Uh, good morning, CJ. Uh, feel free to take off the mask if you're so minded. Otherwise, uh, you may proceed uh, with it. Thank you. How are you, sir? Well. Um, you've been a, a judge for for about three, four years now, am yes. I right? Yes. And uh, you've acted in the Land Claims Court? Yes. Okay, um, just briefly tell us why you would want to be seconded there, very briefly, and why you are the right person to go there. Yes, uh, Chief Justice, uh, the uh, permanent appointment in uh, North Gauteng has been uh, an extremely interesting and enjoyable uh, uh, process uh, since I was uh, appointed. Um, I enjoyed the collegiality and the work that the JP does in that division to ensure that the court runs well oiled. Um, having said that, um, I have, during uh, my stint of three, just over three years at the Land James Court, um, I particularly enjoyed the aspect of um, restoring land to our people. It, it's been a passion that I that I uh, carried since early practice years, uh, and uh, it was extremely rewarding um, to sit in that court and see a genuine change in the lives of people that were restored, um, and uh, I thought it's. It's time to uh, remain as a judge of North Halting, but be seconded uh, to assist in that court because I believe I can contribute um, formidably uh, to, this, to the, the functionality of that court. As we know, the court presently is almost non-functional and uh, there's a fair amount of work to be done I think with my past experience and uh, experience on the bench and in this court, um, I can make a contribution. Thank you, sir. Uh, apart from the two JPs and the MEC, may I have the list, uh, the names of colleagues who have questions for the judge, please? Martin Taylor. Singh. Schlemmer. Both. Yeah. Bonard. <coughs> Sorry, Bonard. Rechenbach, please, Chief Justice. Um, JP Jappy. Thank you, Chief Justice. Sadiwala, when did you first act in the KwaZulu Natal High Court and where was it in Durban or Maritzburg? Durban and Maritzburg. When was it in Durban? Uh, I, I don't have the dates offhand, but uh, it was uh, in about eight, eight or nine years ago. Yes, and as I recall at the time you were involved it was it was a long criminal trial wasn't it yes yes how long did that trial take six months yes why did it take so long uh it was the, the nature of the matter essentially yes. there were a number of witnesses uh mm -hmm. the issues were complex uh there were there were uh certain delays with certain availability of certain witnesses. Uh, so there were, there were various issues that arose at, at the time. 
uh, some that could have been avoided by the parties and others that, that uh, uh, were actually avoid, avoided and, and, and the matter was eventually finalized. And in Durban, when you acted, when last did you act in Durban? This was also about eight years ago, nine years ago. And the work you did in Durban was largely criminal, as, as I no, no, civil and criminal. No, in Marisburg, I know you did some civil work. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Civil in Marisburg and civil in Durban. Yes. Now, you are a permanent judge. Yes. Uh, in Gauteng. And the position you are now applying for would uh, sort of, as I put it to the last candidate, straddle two courts, one leg in the high court and the other in the land claims court. Yes. Now, if you have two matters in both courts outstanding, how do you go about prioritizing? Which matter would you give priority to? Well, I assume if, if I'm seconded and I am practicing I'm on the bench on a matter that, that relates to the, la to the land claims court, I would, I would deal with that first. Mm. Uh, but clearly not just simply proceed uh, at my own whim and fancy, but discuss it with the JP as to whether that is uh, suitable. Because I'm, I'm only seconded to that court. But uh, as I understand it, my, my allegiance to, to the um, High Court remains. I see most of the work that you've done or cases that you've put up were cases, civil matters in Gauteng. Is, is, is that right? Yes. Uh, don't see any from KwaZulu. Is, is, is that correct? I know it's about eight or nine years since you were last there. Yes. Do you remember any specific case? Not offhand. Yeah. Not offhand, but I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I looked at significant trials that I thought must be uh, put up and just not to burden the bundle, which is already quite thick. Yes. And generally, what was your experience like as a acting judge in KwaZulu? As an acting judge? In, yeah. You, you Excellent. Asked. I, I uh, to be. Uh, a judge in your division with your personality, uh, not that my current JP's personality is any less uh, and supportive. It, it, it's, it's, it, it, is a, it is a good court to be in. I, I enjoyed my stay there and I, uh, as I enjoy it in, in Pretoria. And of the two centers, do you think there's a difference between Durban and Maritzburg in the way the work gets done? Vast and, difference. Yeah. Vast difference. And which one would you prefer? I think I'd, I'd, I'd prefer Peter Maritzburg. That's understandable, actually. I see that. Yes, thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Judge President. Um, Acting Judge President Mir. Good morning, Judge Sariwala. It's nice to see you again. Um, you are currently a judge in Gauteng. Yes. May I ask you why you did not apply to the position uh, advertised for secondment from your current court to the Land Claims Court? Why have you applied to be seconded to a different court, one in KZN, and then seconded to the Land Claims Court. I, I don't quite understand this. Uh, so as I applied for secondment, there was a post advertised for secondment, uh, the Land Claims Court to, uh, to seconded to, to KZN. And, and on that basis- no, but there, that. there was also post applied uh, advertised for secondment to uh, from Gauteng to the Land Claims Court. And, and there were people who applied and they, they withdrew. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm just interested to know why, as a judge in Gauteng, you are now applying to be, in effect, you're applying to be transferred to another high court and from that high court, seconded to the land claims court. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't see it as such. I see it as, as, as uh, a vacancy 
uh, and and uh, a secondment to uh, KZN. That's how I see it. Okay, Judge Sariwala, my concern is you and I are both Durbanites, yes. and we both have a, a soft spot for Durban. Yes. And how much of this application is a desire to be in the land claims court or a desire to go back to your home base? Well, if I wanted to go back to my own place, I would certainly have done so, resigned and, and, and gone, applied to KZN. To KZN. But but, but you, uh, I, I, I enjoy, as I said it in my opening address, that I enjoy working in both courts and I want to, uh, when needed, uh, assist both courts. Right. courts. And, and if you don't succeed in this appointment, would you apply to be seconded to the Land Claims Court as a Gauteng judge? I haven't thought about it. Right, uh, Judge Sariwala, in your questionnaire, there are a number of reserved judgments that you refer to. Yes. Uh, and this was, the, understandably, the questionnaire was filled in in 2019. Yes, it was an you, old one. You list four reserved judgments, and there were three parted matters. Uh, I take those. All those have been handed down long ago. And, and currently, what what is your position? I have no. Reserved? I have no outstanding delayed judgments. I have judgments to hand down. There are two of them that I should hand down within the next uh, two or three weeks. Thank you. Uh, Chief Justice, I may have one or two uh, further questions later on in the interview, if that's all right. I will indicate so. Thank you, Judge Sariwala. Thank you. Th thank you, AJP. Uh, MEC. Thank you, uh, CJ, and uh, good morning, Judge uh, Sadiwal. I think the, the first question uh, has been covered. Uh, the other one that I have, uh, the issue of the, of the communal land in KZN is really one of the contentious issues. And um, the communal land, most of it is uh, held by Amakosi, um, but uh, it actually belongs to Ingonyama Trust. So they hold it in custodianship of Ingonyama Trust. Now that creates a situation where uh, households or individual people are unable to enjoy the security of tenure. So they are literally there as tenants in a sense, but they can't use the land that they have or that they, they occupy for any collateral means. And uh, that's a running debate in, in, in the province, including Amakos now starting to demand that they also get to own land and not in custodianship of Ingonyama Trust. Now, what do you think should be the solution around that debate? Thanks. Well, <clears throat> this has been a thorn uh, for government and, and given the nature of the and dynamics that exist in respect of that land, um, attempts have been made, uh, some very serious attempts that I'm aware of that have been made. Uh, none of them came to fruition. Um, th it's a clash between the um, existing land, its ownership, its or its occupation, whichever it is, um, and the desire of the powers that are. Um, this impasse will not be sorted out, even if it is uh, litigated upon, and then previously was. Um, the, the, the issues are far too big uh, to be dealt with in a, in a court, in, in my opinion. There needs to be a different form of intervention, an urgent in intervention uh, to get parties to reach some kind of consensus on uh, property, uh, occupation, sharing, 
uh, even ownership. Um, and, and, and this has to be, do, to be done by, in my view, the best method is mediation in this case. Mediation is, this is a classic situation where mediation is perhaps the only way, but mediation with parties separately and then mediation of all the parties. Uh, I don't think there was a very serious attempt. I'm aware of one or two attempts that were made, but there needs to be a serious, serious um, uh, attempt with all parties participating with uh, all their kid loves off and rationality being there, reality being there. Um, the land is dependent on the government. Government is dependent on the people that that I am that on that land, um, and it's just one difficult issue. Do you think you finished there, Missy? Just a follow up, oh. CJ. Do you think it's it it accords with the spirit of the constitution to have one institution occupying so much land when the majority of the people can't enjoy security of ten. On the face of it, no. On the face of it, no. But if one can't in isolation uh, deal with this, the issues in, 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 in respect of the, of, the, of the trust. There are various dynamics. And I, I believe that all the dynamics must be brought to the fore and, and, and discussed um, piecemeal. It may take, may take some time, but uh, it's unfortunate that when there's a deadlock, people walk away, there's far more anger. Uh, there's, in fact, it, it, it's worse than the, than the previous occasions when, when they tried to deal with it. Um, but there needs to be a, a resolution and a quick one at that as well. And, and Ingunayama is not the only one uh, in our country that should be dealt with in that way. Thank you so much, CJ. Thank you, MEC. Advocate Madonsel, SC. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, good uh, morning, Judge uh, morning. Sadawala. Morning. Uh, yeah, I, uh, the question I'm going to ask is already somewhat been covered by the, uh, the question posed to you by uh, Justice Muir. Yes. Uh, but I just want to clarify it from my own mind by asking differently. You are already a judge in the lane, you in the lane claims court, because I've seen you doing one amongst others, the Salim case, which went all the way to the constitutional court. You already are doing land claims. I have done as, land claims. I've done many actually. Yeah. Uh, well, as and, a, and, as and a the... sitting judge in Gaute. Yes. Now you are applying to be a, a judge in the High Court in Cape and doing land claims matters uh, or seconded in that court. What difference will it make to you if you were to be if you were to be appointed in Cape and and doing land claims matters, which you are already doing as a housing judge? I don't understand the difference. Well, I I've, I originate from. Uh, Durban, KZN. I'm a KZN boy. Lady Smith in particular. Namit. Namit, as I can yes. yeah, where I come from. Uh, and and um, I know the, the, the community, I know the society. They, I, I've done a lot of work amongst communities uh, right from my practice days um, until recently. So um, I believe that it, it, would, it would have a dual purpose. I would be in Durban familiar environment and yet available to the uh, JP in, in, in uh, Pretoria if, I, if I'm required. Uh, I am, to answer your question in addition to what I said, I am familiar with the dynamics of KZN and, but, and, and, and the land issues. But I, 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 my understanding is that the, the land claims court is a nomadic court, to use the judge, the, the term that judge Near use. It, you judges are rotated throughout the country. You don't have to be a judge in the province. You are a judge nomadically. Well, 
Yes, the, the, one travels around the country, but wherever you are, you travel around the country. It's, it's part of the work in the land claims court. You have to travel, you have to um, uh, go to where the land is and do inspections and these things are, it, it, it's part of the process in the land claims court. So it doesn't make any difference whether you're in the Khautum, you're doing land, land matters as a Khautum judge, or then met as, as a case of NGI, it seems to me, am I wrong? Well, certainly there's no difference in the work you do. Absolutely. It's just that where you, where you are based. Um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that I, I would like to be based in KZN and, and work from KZN. Just Chief Justice, as a follow-up, just one follow-up. So in, if we were to be appointed yes. in KZN, a vacancy will then occur in Gauteng. Yes. Oh. So then we must then thereafter fill that vacancy. No, no. I, uh, As a JSC. At, at the time, I will make a decision if, if, if I'm of view that I, I'd like to do, to, to change. But I mean, that's as far as I can take it. Thank you, Chief Justice. Maybe just a follow up, Chief Justice, on this matter. Please go ahead, sir. The, the, the process of uh, permanent uh, disappointment uh, uh, can it address the issue? Have you approached the judge president to, to release you? Yes. I have spoken to the judge president and I have his blessings. You know, the, the difficulty is you are a judge, you are in the, we, the, the JSC is interviewing a judge for a judge position. Uh, the issue is, have you encountered any problem with regard to secondment to the land claims court? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Singh. Uh, thank you very much, Chief Justice, and good morning, Judge Sadiwala. Good morning. Good uh, morning. Yeah, just just uh, to confirm, your hometown is Ladysmith, as Commissioner uh, Madonsela comes from there as well, uh, Nambiti. And uh, the other question relating to communal land, etc., has been canvassed by MEC Mshengu and taken up by Commissioner Madonsela as well. I would just like to ask you a question, which I asked the other candidate. Uh, and, and if you can just share your experience with us, uh, having served on the Land Claims Court. Uh, 31st December 1998 was a cutoff date for submission of land claims. And uh, I remember at one stage there were about 14,000 or so unprocessed land claims for prima facie evidence that there is indeed a claim. Uh, to, you have to adjudicate on matters when they come to the court. Well, that's, that's the purpose of the court. What is your experience on the administration before matters reach your court uh, of land claims and processing them? Thank you. Well, one experiences a matter or receives a matter that is allocated or that it reaches the court, presumably after the department and the communities have uh, engaged each other um, in an attempt to find some ground or common ground uh, for relating to restoration. But um, um, other than that, matters uh, are referred to the, to, to, to the court um, and, and at that stage, the engine starts running uh, the investigations are completed, uh, and if the parties haven't agreed, the matter is uh, set down for trial. Yeah, what I'm trying to ascertain, just as, as a follow-up, is that, you know, very often I hear and uh, others hear that the court is delaying the process of land restitution and land reform. Uh, is that a fair criticism? If somebody applied in, nine, in 2000 and you're hearing the matter in 2020, is that a fair criticism on the court or is it the process before it comes to court? That's what I'm trying to ascertain. Okay. Yes, no, it is, there's a, there's a fair amount of delay 
before and depending on what the status of the parties are in so far as um, the availability of the land, the ownership of the land, and whether agreement can be reached uh, on, on whether uh, the, can, the, the land can be allocated. That process um, often takes a while. It, 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 it in some instances can take uh, a year or two or even more uh, before the actual hearing. Uh, the department has to commence its investigations. Uh, documents are exchanged and then and, and the matter when ripe will be heard. Well, thank you, Judge. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Uh, Prof. Thank you, Chief Justice. Um, I think I've been covered by most of the questions asked until now. The one thing that I would like to know from you is um, what is your judicial philosophy when you sit in the land claims court? Is it any different from otherwise? It's, it's the same that I've always had. The, the rights of uh, individuals that have occupied uh, must be respected by and by, and, 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 and uh, I sit with that cap. Uh, it's the process of investigating the eligibility or entitlement to land is then the only debate uh, in my mind. Thank you. I see that some of the cases that you've dealt with, um, it took some time, up to seven months, some time to give your um, your judgment. Can you well, comment on your average time that you take to deliver judgment? Yeah. The Salem judgment was a particularly long matter. It, it lasted almost a year uh, with a number of parties intervening. Um, that was ex exceptionally long. Uh, it, it, it ran maybe even beyond, just beyond the year. <clears throat> and that judge, judgment has been upheld by the uh, SEA and the Corn Court. Uh, they acknowledged my judgment uh, and, and, and it has assisted in the process, subsequent processes. Um, but by and large, uh, judgments are done um, and finalized as, as quickly as we can, certainly not beyond the periods that are stipulated, three months, six months, depending on the na nature of the matter, uh, one, one, one aims for three months after, maximum of three months after the judgment, the matter has been finalized completely. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Prof. Commissioner uh, Thank you, CJ. Good morning. Good morning, Judge Sadwell. Morning, morning. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I'll, I'm torn between whether you should leave our division or, or not. But uh, I just wanted to point out something maybe about your, to follow up on Prof's um, issues about your judicial philosophy, which I'd like you to explain more. Uh, whether you go to the land claims court or, or stay where you are. In relation to a crucial issue of women's rights, I appeared in, in a matter before you where you, you uh, expressed, I think something, a, a philosophy, at least on that issue that uh, is something that I think should be encouraged, particularly with male judges, because sometimes it's believed that it's only female judges who might be sensitive to these issues. And I want to read from the judgment where you started, your heading says women's rights are human rights. And you say, historically, women have been excluded from political life and decision-making process. Women's campaigns for participating in the public and political arena date back to the 19th and 20th century. Although women's, uh, many of women's rights have been secured in every country in the world, in practice, those rights can sometimes be meaningless when other uh, 
conditions make it virtually impossible or very difficult for women. And you even referred to the convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. To what extent is that part of what Professor called your judicial philosophy? And why, what is the importance of, uh, as I say, male judges being sensitive to those issues in the current environment in South Africa? Well, I say in, in, in this day and age, and, and sadly it took a long time, there is no excuse to show utmost respect to women's rights in any matter. They, they need to be elevated as the, the, the uh, rights that were trampled over the years. There should be now some reparation that starts in all our minds as men uh, and, and, and to ensure that there's as quick as possible parity in the type of treatment that women are entitled to. Thank you. Now, specifically to do with the land, the, we know that some of the impediments to progressive land reform, if one can call it that, are some of the traditional practices and in the fact that although you might distribute land uh, to black people, which is something that needs to be done, there are still practices that are limiting to women's ownership of land. How would you assist in blending the, the, that dichotomy, so to speak, if you are appointed? People that do not uh, create the space and area for those rights to be expressed and implemented don't belong to us. They don't belong to us. They belong to some other generation or some other society. If in this day and age, they cannot give their utmost in ensuring that these light rights are preserved in every facet, not just the law, just not just property and land, but in every facet of life. Um, and, and the sooner our society becomes uh, a party to that convention, the better for this country. Thank you. Thank you, Sajjan. Thank you very much, Advocate. Anga um, Thank you. I'm covered, CJ. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Barna. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, good morning, Judge Sadiwala. Morning. Um, I, I'm just thinking about the, the evidence, if you can maybe just address us on the, the use of expert evidence specifically, you know, as in that Salem uh, party club judgment, as it evolved through up to the Constitutional Court, it was, it was pointed out that um, even the evidence that is not admissible in other courts would be admissible in, in, in land claims matters in terms of the Restitution Act. So the question is this, is how important is expert evidence in the, in the land claims court matters? And how does the court deal with it in determining claims? And the whole, you know, dual witness accounts on the one hand and historian accounts on the other hand. Yes. That's a very interesting question. The, the, the process of land claims deals with mainly rural people. Majority of the large claims are relating to people that are indigent, living in poor circumstances, and the past has been obliterated almost entirely over the years. Um, so one starts with a investigative process, uh, firstly via the commission. And once the matter is handed over to the court, um, inspection in locos are held. I've walked many a mountain uh, with a stick and without a stick to ensure that we have a good grip on what the, what is there on the ground? What rights are there? Uh, who's been flouted of their rights? Uh, 
people that uh, have been ignored for years, one has to revive those rights. Uh, to, and, 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 and it's a holistic approach when dealing with, with uh, land claim matters, very different to the normal court uh, situation. I'm sure Judge Mir will uh, agree with that. It's just related to that, what's your what's your view to the special master appointment that um, has been made previously by the land court, land well, land court? Well, I think it's important that there is a special master, but I think I'm, I'm concerned that a proper structure must be in place, all encompassing uh, and investigative. Uh, in nature, uh, so that we have real live results that are workable and uh, implementable. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, sir. Um, Honorable Breitenbach. Thank you, Chief Justice. I'm covered. Thank you very much. Honorable Taba. Uh, thank you, Chief Justice. I'm covered. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable J.P. Lambo. Uh, Chief Justice, uh, I had raised my hand maternally. I think you omitted my name. I, I apologize, uh, Commissioner. I, you know, I think it was at a time when names were coming up quickly. I apologize that I didn't slot you in. Um, can I uh, hand over to the JP and then you'll come after him or do you want to come in now? The JP is, 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 is pointing at me. I think I'll come in now. <laughs> All right, okay, go ahead, Commissioner. Okay, thank you, CJ. Uh, good morning, Josh. Morning. I, I just want to, to find out when you responded to the MEC, regarding the Ngonyama Trust and uh, some of the questions that we asked, you said it's quite a difficult issue and very difficult. You don't even think that the court will resolve it, yeah? but you suggested that mediation may be the way. But my question is, you know, mediation is where two parties agree to, to go, go into mediation. I mean, the positions of the, the community, the government and the Ngonyama Trust are very far apart for me to go for mediation. Are you excluding the issue of expropriation if the matter goes to court? Well, it, it depends on, on the extent to which negotiations go and, and whether parties can meet at some reasonable level to accommodate, to accommodate both the views. Uh, and that's that's that a serious attempt, as I said earlier on, must be made. Uh, but if that does not uh, come to fruition, then the courts are there to deal with these issues. Uh, it's it's not a bar. It's just that the dynamics of that particular uh, situation um, one could expect. Uh, ongoing litigation for years, uh, but, but be that as it may, that may be the only process um, if my suggestion is, does, uh, does not uh, uh, bear any fruit. To follow up, I think for, for me, I, I do understand that you think litigation may be ultimately the way to go, but the mediation process, if we start with mediation, don't you think it will actually even delay this more? Because for me, the, the position are just too far apart. Yes, sorry. It's possible. It's possible that it could be delayed further. History says that attempts have failed thus far. Attempts to, to, to reach some settlement has, have failed. The suggestion that I am making is that there needs to be an all-encompassing participation in, an, in one final attempt to, to, to reach consensus on 
at least some of the issues, if not all at once. It may be holistically too much of a uh, bag to carry, but, but if, if it is um, analyzed and separated into portions that can be dealt with uh, at a time, it may be one of the, 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 the approaches parties can take. These are just views I, I, I'm sharing from what I read. Mr. Jay, thank you very much, Commissioner. JP? Thank you, CJ. Uh, I just have one minor question left. Others have been covered. Um, Judge Sadwala, you were very excited with the Salim case when it went to the Constitutional Court and was confirmed. Am I correct? Yes. You've not listed here as amongst the significant cases that you've penned. Is there a reason why you didn't include it? I thought that it was well in, known well enough not to, not to note it. I see. Okay. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, Chief Justice. Thank you, I... JP. President? Oh, is there a follow-up? Oh, thanks, is there, is there a follow-up? Uh, it's not a follow-up. It's a separate question, but I will wait my turn. All right. Uh, President, oh, please part. go ahead. No, I'm covered, CJ. Thank you. Okay. AJP, please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Sariwala, or Judge Sariwala, it would be remiss of me as head of the Land Claims Court not to raise an instance whilst you were acting in the Land Claims Court, where instead of hearing a matter that had been set down, you went off to attend mediation in lower courts related work. And I, as the head of the court, was put in the extraordinary situation where litigants phoned me and said, we're all here, but there's no judge. Uh, we, I, I would need an undertaking from you that if you were appointed to the land claims court, you would always be available. You would always be at hearings, which are allocated to you. I know you're a busy person. You have other uh, activities extrajudicial, but can you give me that undertaking? It gives me no pleasure to raise this here, but as the head of the court, I have to know that the judges will be where they have to be as they have to be, and litigants will be attended to. I think you've raised, raised us with me some time ago, and I, I recollect the incident as well. Um, there was uh, another matter that I was busy with and the parties were not ready at that time. When, when I was ready to start, suddenly one of the parties wasn't present and then and, and we waited and I said, look, this matters, I'll stand it down and we'll then proceed at a later stage once parties are here. Uh, that was done and finalized subsequent. Uh, but certainly, you know, there, there was a misunderstanding that that existed between myself and the parties at that, 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 that time. Well, the, the misunderstanding led to a complaint coming to me as head of the court. Yes, and and, and as I said, I was in this extraordinary situation yes. where they said, we're all here. There's no judge. Yes. But I, I informed you subsequently as to Yes, no, we, we did deal with that. And yes. I take it you you will give me an undertaking that if you are appointed, we won't have a repeat of that. Uh, of course, I, 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 it's unbecoming to, to do any of such thing to, to the court. I certainly will. Thank you, Judge Sariwala. Judge uh, Sariwala, Thank you, CJ. 